What's up, Sassy Gamers? Today is September 9th, 2021, and this is Season 2, Episode 13 of Got Our Attention Podcast. I'm here today with the usual suspects, Brian and Kelly. What's up, guys? Brian, nothing. You got nothing for us. At least Kelly said hello. I mean... I'll even we went away from that intro a while ago, and like, you can still I just say let hello. you do your thing. You can still say hi. Don't be shy. It's what fun. the F is up, mother effers? Wow. All right. Get right into that. <laughs> no, I mean, everybody's awesome. Cool. So, uh, got some news for you guys today. Some, uh, some, some topics to talk about. <laughs> so terrible. I got to figure something else better to say here at the beginning. <laughs> And then we got some uh, topics we'll for you. Yeah, we got some things. We're going <laughs> to talk stuff? about some, some things and stuff. Yeah, talk I retract my things. statement where I said that you had it all together <laughs> at the beginning of the show. Yeah, basically. <laughs> so I am going to go ahead and let Kelly have her corner. Yeah, that was your music. Thank you. All right. Uh, For my corner today, I told you guys last time that I was going to show you some of my favorite, like, Halloween decorations that I've created or bought or whatever. Um, and Kelly, I, hold up. There's oh. somebody behind you. <gasps> <laughs> That's my new favorite. She's been one. waiting for me to do that. <laughs> yes. Actually, I've done this many times tonight and she keeps doing the same thing. <laughs> and I still do the same exact thing. So my friend Michael is going to be with us in the podcast today. Hope you guys don't mind. He's, hmm. he's really quiet though. So it should be fine. Uh, so one wait, of the- but is it actually <laughs> Michael? That's true. I've That's seen this movie true. before. I've seen this movie a couple of times. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, so well, the thing I wanted to show you today uh, was actually my favorite. So a lot of the decorations that I have are not. To others, they would be Halloween decorations. But for me, they're like everyday decorations. You guys have mm-hmm. been in my house. Um, you've probably noticed some of these weird, creepy things. Um, so this one that I made. Um, is a jewelry holder. So nice. you can put your bracelets on the wrist, the <laughs> <laughs> rings there, and you can hang necklaces. You know, I'd um, give you a hand, but I think you've got that big <laughs> Yes. <Boom. laughs> the pearl necklace as well. <laughs> yes. For those of you not reference. watching, uh, Kelly has a plate. Yeah which she somehow yes. glued a skeleton hand to. Yeah. Uh, so it has the ability to be able to hang things from. And I, I've and, got and a I picture. appreciate that. I appreciate mm-hmm. that. It seems to have the capability to both hang from a wall so mm-hmm. that you can put bracelets on the wrist or exactly. you can put it upright as well. And it still allows you to put some rings on it and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Rings. It's kind of dual can- purpose. Yeah, Stick I actually made a replica of my hand in ceramics in college. And that's what it was used for. I used it for like rings. Yeah, rings. <laughs> It'll fit me because <laughs> clearly it's actually funny. Yeah. So this is uh, a jewelry hanger and I will post pictures of it on um, my Insta and um, the the SAS Insta as well. Um, but if you want to make this yourself, um, it, it's very cheap. So the hand, uh, the, the skeletal hand, um, I got off of Amazon for probably 15 bucks. Do not search for Halloween decoration hand or anything like that. Search for um, like skeletal recreation or medical training tool or something like some some sort of, you know, medical skeleton hand model, something like that. And it'll be cheaper if you search specifically for Halloween. You're going to actually pay a lot more. So I, like I said, I think I got this for like this hand for 15 bucks off Amazon. The plate I actually got from a uh, Asian market real close to my house. Um, so this is a you know porcelain plate that matches the decor in my bathroom. So you can get any plate that you want. Uh, and then I went to my very favorite hardware store and got a plate holder um, so that I and I did actually drill a hole there. Uh, but this plate holder you can get to display you know, your grandparent mother's plates on your wall or whatever. Uh, So that's the same one that I got here. What I did, though, is I took the base of the skeleton hand off and I drilled holes. 
I used that as a guide and I drilled holes in the plate. You have to have a, um, uh, a ceramic or glass drill yes. tip and you need to just go slow <laughs> It is just the tip, but you need to go to that point. You need to go slow. Um, also I put a piece of, um, tape on both sides uh, that helped prevent cracking. I actually went through, I bought a couple of these plates because I knew I was going to have an issue and I actually went through one of them and, and chipped it and had to start over on the next one. So super easy to make. I think the plate cost me like two bucks. The, the, you know, display option, the, the, the display rack was like another three or four bucks. Um, so depending on where you go, I'm sure you can get it for pretty cheap, but it was easy. It, the whole thing took me 15 minutes. The longest part of it is actually drilling um, in the ceramic. So. And you too um, can have one if you join our Patreon. At <laughs> if you join uh, your Patreon, it, yes, I will make you one. <laughs> She'll come to your house and make you one. Well, auto, I won't come to your house. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> All right, level 10, whatever. <laughs> That's good. You can pay for the flight. Tier level stalker skelly. Yeah, we're going to need we're gonna need a background check. Uh, <laughs> Right. All right. The other creepy Send in thing. your vaccination card. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, that's great. Hmm. All right. The other creepy thing I have for you is really more of a love story than creepy. Oh. Uh, beginning of September is the annual tarantula migration. Uh, you said love story. I was actually, nice. I believed you for half a second. You did. I know. You got me. Um, so it's when in, in Colorado, I need to be very specific. Tarantula migration in Colorado. It's not actually a migration. Uh, it's people have miscalled it a uh, migration just because they're seeing the tarantulas more. Really, what they're doing is the male tarantulas are crawling out of their burrows and trying to find a lover. Um, so the female Bonnaroo. Yeah. Burning uh, Man, I guess more burning man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so the, the females typically stay in their burrows or holes. Um, it's cause of the ecstasy. It's real cute though. <laughs> no, they like to be out and free when they're, when they got the ecstasy going. I've heard, I've heard, <laughs> uh, I'm just saying burning man. <laughs> <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, so the, Male, when he finds a female's bro, he like lightly like or rapidly taps on her front door and is like, hey, and then waits for her to come out. And so when she does come out, they do their thing. Um, the males or she eats them. <laughs> I'm getting there. So the males typically don't live that long uh, for multiple reasons. One, since they're out and about and they're typically you know in their burrows predators start eating them uh they walk across streets you know what happens to the what why did the tarantula cross the road did he get back to the other side uh so they get you know hit by cars and then also starvation sometimes they're just so in Aww. love and done that they don't have any interest in eating or drinking um also uh <clears throat> if the female's really problem. cranky <laughs> If the female's really cranky, she eats them. So, <laughs> so there's really a lopsided <laughs> hunger, <laughs> postcoital hunger. There. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, see. when they, you got the munchies, you got the munchies. I mean, sometimes I bake cookies. So uh, <laughs> the <laughs> the so the migration. Oh no, Kelly's baking cookies again. She must have had some fun last night. <laughs> Oh, it's good night. And she's baking cookies. Uh, so the migration happens until the it starts to freeze, um, typically. So if you find yourself out in Colorado or are really interested in tarantulas, um, make your way out there for the first frost. And yeah, for sure. Won't do that. <laughs> yeah. So I legit, I legit was outside <laughs> trimming the bush. And uh, <laughs> this is inappropriate. Are your neighbors Ryan? okay with that? Don't you like an HOA or something? <laughs> You've got a tall fence, right? <laughs> I mean, they, they force me to trim the bush. It gets, it gets really wild sometimes. Oh, my. And I legit saw a jumping spider 
which apparently makes a wonderful pet. Um, mm, cause they're super mm-mm. tiny. They're super tiny and they get the cutest little faces. Um, not okay, man. No. Yeah. You, you, you know, what's terrifying. You lost me at, uh, all of that. Yeah. The, I mean, so mm. he was up on the side of the house and I was like, oh, I could just get a little area for him to live and like put him in there and then make it like happy for him and throw a cricket in there every now and then for him. And then no. the wife would probably kill me. And then all um, the, one day she walks up and the terrarium's em- empty and she's like, WTF. Oh, no, they, they, you don't you don't. Uh, there's no way for them to get out. Oh, uh, but if you that's open what them, you, say. you can actually mm-hmm. like uh, you use a, a paintbrush to train them to move around and, and they'll jump onto your hand and they'll like crawl around and they to get really tame and awesome. Gosh. OK, well, I learned something new today. Uh, hold on. Let me tell you something even more terrifying while we're still on the same subject. Um, the most terrifying bug I have ever, ever encountered. Is a spider cricket. Yes, I was Ooh. just about to say that, and I have seen them firsthand, and they are terrifying. <gasps> they when I are. saw that thing, I was under my house. And oh, yes, they're in our that's, basement. Okay, oh, already yes. that's not a good place to that, like encounter things. That is terrifying. Those things, they, they don't are give crazy. Up. Fuck. They, they I, I can't don't. even, there's not even words to describe. Oh, they come at you as you're trying to kill yes. them. Yes, they know. Oh, I've got goosebumps. Oh, my I, God. They are we uh, immediately also, got the is, extermination. This people. is also a wonderful time the to mention nightmares that. nightmares are made of. Yes. This it's, is also a wonderful time to mention that uh, Day Drinker now edits and publishes mm-hmm. the audio portion of the yes. podcast. <laughs> and cleans up the F-bombs like yeah. the one she just dropped. So I can swear all I want. If you've never seen a spider <laughs> cricket, they are just as yes. about terrifying as it sounds. Uh, they almost... Like move like roaches, but oh my god, they are spiders they jump. and they can no, they jump. jump and they hit you and then they yes. jump off. Oh, yes, <laughs> it is terrifying. Okay, I'm gonna make a note to I post a out. picture. I I'm freaked so- out when I saw because I had never heard of this before, and like I literally go in the basement to check something out, and I hit the light, and all of a sudden oh. they were just like, <sighs> and I was like, what was that? Because that that was not a roach, and I know mm-hmm. what roaches look like. That mm-hmm. is not a roach. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I know what spiders look like, and that's not a spider. So they're related no. grasshoppers. Man, it, it, they it's are a spider, weird. Yeah. I went down in our basement to get a tool or something and was just walking around. And I felt something like hit my hip. And I was like, ah! I was like, never again. Yeah. I don't want to go in the basement. And I told my husband, we needed something else down there. I needed to change the uh, nope. AC filter. And I was like. Okay, um, can you can you tell me what size we need? And he was like, uh, I will later. And finally, I was like, just honey, I, I'm like afraid to go down there. And he's like, I am kind of too. Because <laughs> of those darn spider yeah, crickets. I had never seen them until this house. And that is and I had been in. So I've lived in Georgia my whole life. And that yes. was a new one for me. They this are, is just things another reason why you made of live nightmares, nightmares in like. Up. California or Phoenix. No, there's terrifying are, creatures out there too, man. They're Scorpions? more common. Well, I, listen, I've lived many, many years in Phoenix and I only ever saw two scorpions ever. They were never near my house. And what, one of them was one of two them more was than I've ever dead. Yeah, you know, they're both dead. Okay. I've never seen a live one in Phoenix. I saw a live one once when I was in Tucson. Yeah, well, I mean, that's as I was also like seven. Oh, <laughs> I mean, duh. I mean, it's only like an hour apart. I mean, <laughs> uh, I mean clearly more than an hour, but definitely a, a different biological environment for sure. <laughs> I mean, if I, if I go, well, well I mean, it, th- there's so much city in Phoenix that there's yeah. a lot less scorpions. That's true. But, I also saw a tarantula in our house. No, well, I mean, yeah, yeah. there you go. But they're just friendly, good nature. They are like yes. awesome. They might bite you if you like, like it, they have one. to be really scared to bite you. Also, did you know that yes. the males typically live 10 years, but the females live for 30? Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, All right, I'm ready to move on. And it's it is interesting <laughs> that her tone completely changes talking about tarantulas that actually can bite you and hurt. 
but not kill you. Tone goes super freaks out at spider crickets that can't even no. bite you. Tarantulas they, are they, like pets. They, they, spider, spider crickets, crickets mm. are terrifying. Demons. They are demons. There's, there's they have only come one letter difference from hell. between pests and pets. Nope. Yes, this is true. All right. On that note, we're going to move oh, in spider to the news. <laughs> That's the dumbest thing I've made up on the spot ever. <laughs> my papers uh, oh wait oh sorry I, the news I already did it it's fine oh i'm just doing it because well yeah but i can't hear I it i know so. but you you said you weren't ready so if you're ready now no, i am ready i've been playing it i've like i played it before i made kelly dance you know mm, I, I today i had the i had the music in my heart i'll say because i haven't heard anything today <laughs> only from what i played oh good gravy so anyway we'll just continue with me <laughs> So we um, unless you've been living under a rock. Which some of the people who signed this law probably do. uh, Texas. Has decided that uh, pro-life is the way to go and that women don't have rights. They don't get to tell what they want about their body. Uh, They don't make the decisions on their own body because, you know, why would they? I mean, they're just women, right? No big deal. I mean. (laughs) We shouldn't. We do. We have the intellectual wherewithal. Oh man. <sighs> anyway, so if you hadn't heard That's that, a man, there joke, goes. By the way, there goes your yeah, plan of beating this off neutrally yeah. and not putting your own opinion in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so obviously that's happened. This, I agree with your opinion, so I'm okay with this it. past yeah, week. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> that was ruled in Texas. It's caused a lot of uproar, a lot of protest, um, a lot of. Uh, protests in Texas, uh, protests outside of Texas in different countries, uh, even ac- uh, around uh, different countries like Mexico is actually standing up. Uh, they had actually uh, passed a another law to saying that it, like against like they are against the pro-life thing. And like they're they're saying they're pro-choice and they have ladies out there protesting that as well, which was pretty awesome to see another country even standing yeah. up. Uh, I mean, obviously, they're bordering Texas, so they're kind of like neighbors and all. But. Anyway, so that's happened. Um, so how this relates to video games, right? So there is a company, uh, there's a gaming studio called Tripwire Studios, and they are the public or actually the developers of the game Maneater, which we also uh, we showed on a game of the moment one time. Uh, they're also the makers of uh, what was the other game I saw on there? There was uh, Chivalry, Chivalry 2. Uh, so they do that one. And there was some other game as well, uh, along with some other uh, publications that they've done um, over time. So the CEO of Tripwire, I think this was on Tuesday of this week or maybe, uh, yeah, I think it was Tuesday of this week, uh, gets on Twitter, as most people love to do, and tweets out that he is uh, proud of his legislative group that has decided that the law of women don't matter. Uh, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. I'm just making kind of like what he set up. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, but basically said he was proud of the decision and that he stands for that. And this was from his personal account from who is the CEO of Tripwire Studios. And obviously this wasn't taken very well. Uh, so shortly after that, another tweet um, from Shipwright Studios uh, comes out and they basically um, kind of like at him from that comment, like retweet him. And say uh, in in their note, they said uh, we started ship right with the idea that is that was finally time to put our money where our mouth is. They add we cannot in good conscience uh, continue to work with Tripwire under the current leadership structure. We will begin the cancellation of our existing contracts effective immediately. So wow. as soon as the CEO of Tripwire decided to say the ship right. Uh, who is one of their publishers and also been helping a lot of different contracts that they've had for different game development, uh, completely pulled all their contracts and was like, yep, we're not working with that. Like, that's not how we stand. And that's just not what we're going to do. So uh, fast forward. Like the next day, day or so. Um, Obviously, uh, you're making your sound effects. Yeah, obviously, Tripwire. You don't don't need to play anything. uh, Tripwire obviously started getting some hate. Uh, you know, some very concerned people out there in the world, you know, adding them on Twitter and, and you know, sending all kinds of different things on Reddit. And uh, what we find out then is that the Tripwire CEO has basically quit. So he says he stepped down. Oh, the other game was Killing Floor, another one that they make. So he uh, he decided to tip uh, um, 
to stand down. And what he said, this was actually the initial chase is proud of hashtag U S Supreme court affirming the Texas law, banning abortion for babies with a heartbeat as an entertainer. I don't get political often yet with so many vocal peers on the other side of the issue. I felt it was important to go on the record as a pro life game developer. Uh, and yep, that basically buried him. And then uh, tripwire released a, a Twitter post and said, the comments given by John Gibson are of his own opinion and do not reflect those of Tripwire Interactive as, com- as a company. His comments disregarded the values of our whole team, our partners, and much of our broader community. Our leadership trip team at Tripwire are deeply sorry and are unified on, in our commitment to take swift action and to foster more positive environments. So, effective immediately, John Gibson has stepped down as CEO of Tripwire Interactive. Uh, and then the co founder um, and current vice president will take over in the interim for the CEO. Um, So that's basically what's happened. And to me, what's really interesting here is because this is this is not the first time that someone has said something, uh, whether it's about abortion or whether it's about whatever. uh, Over the last few years, we've had, you know, outrage on both sides of the street and all kinds of craziness going on. Um, But realistically, like when you are like the face of a company or any any sort of position like can affect other people's lives. Like you don't voice your opinion like that. Like that's not the way to really do this. Um, especially at least not talking without talking to your, like your staff and like your company. Like, cause, cause if let's say tripwire did agree, everyone on the team was like, yeah, we're totally pro-life. That's fine. Say that. Then at least that way they're not blindsided when something like this happens. And like all of a sudden your CEO comes out and says this and you're like, I'm a woman like I'm actually about pro choice. Like what the heck? Mm. Um, so that was kind of, I've always thought that about you. Yeah, really? <laughs> so that's what kind of struck me odd is that, you know, for someone, you know, obviously the CEO of a company, like he's not, I mean, well, I would, I wouldn't have thought he was that dumb. Um, but he basically comes out and says something that literally ended his career. I mean, that's literally yeah. ending. Like that's, like, I don't see another game developer in any time in the future de- hiring this guy on. Uh, especially with like the vocal, you know, ability that he has just to get out there and just tweet stuff. That's just crazy. So, I mean, there are a number of game developers in Texas. Yeah. And we'll see if that's true. That's true. We'll see what happens. Um, so that's basically I probably won't because usually we don't see. You know, I mean, president. Yeah. I mean, that's a good point. He's high up enough that we might see if he gets hired on someone else. But president of a smaller place sometimes becomes like, you know, maybe a VP of another place. And then you don't hear too much about it. But but it was interesting to see this because, you know, we've talked about the blizzard, um, you know, whole lawsuit that's going on with them and how people's rights are being violated, that we're finding out about different things of way that, you know, they had like that frat party type uh, environment. And, you know, this is like even with like Twitch and the hate raids and all of these things that like people are coming out and standing up for and to see something like this also happen and to see people act quick on it. Like even the studio themselves were like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like we don't condone that at all. And that's ridiculous. And like, we're sorry. Like we're deeply sorry for this opinion that this person put out there, like basically by our name. And that's not the way we want to do this. Um, So that was cool to see um, them kind of, you know, take ownership essentially for it uh, quickly uh, and swiftly and trying to, to make it right. And, um, you know, I'm, you know, stand up for shipwright studios for just going ahead and saying, Hey, whoa, we're pulling all our contracts, dude. Like, and and it's just, it just goes to show you that quick that, you know, your actions can do things like you say things and people can like literally stop working with you the next day and you could literally be out of a company. Yeah. Um, but people just, I guess, forget that. And it's just kind of blows my mind. Yeah. It, 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 he, he posted from his personal yeah. account and, you know, while, you know, we, th- a lot of times you think, Oh, well, uh, this is my personal account. No, nobody cares. Well, when you are a CEO yeah. or a public figure of any sort, your personal account it, it, is, is, it, you know, linked to, your company, right. you know, so I, I do, I will say, you know, when people like dig up stuff from people's past, um, I, I don't know that it's always necessarily fair. Like, you know, if, if I tweeted something 10 years ago and, you know, because I, you know, it was uneducated, my opinion has changed or my, my James yeah. Gunn. Yeah. 
your, your mindset's changed. Like you, you've learned, you've matured, you've grown. I don't think, I don't necessarily think that somebody should be held accountable to what you said X number of years ago, unless it's well, still the way it, you feel, which is, you know, I mean, something that could be but at the same prove, time, but. At, at the same time, there are, mm -hmm. there are plenty of employees that tweet something. Yeah. Currently. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, yeah. chat and has said get fired. Well, and get fired for, you know, what they tweeted currently. And then there's an uproar about mm -hmm. that of like, oh my God, that's a personal account. They're not representing the company. And, and you are in a way though, you, you, you really still are. Yeah, you really are. So to so chat on Twitch mm -hmm. has said, uh, this is mud, butt uh, Sally says, I'll take the unpopular opinion here. I don't think you should be vilified for having an opinion. Uh, and he said, That's I don't true. agree with the person just to be clear. Uh, but no, I, I totally agree with yeah. that. I don't think that w this isn't really about, uh, oh, my God, he's against said thing because, yeah, you, mm -hmm. you are entitled to your own opinion. I mean, this is yeah. this is the Internet, right? Like in social media, it is. But you are also held for your actions. And the issue here, like I said, uh, is that he spoke out as an authority figure, like CEO of a company yeah. uh, and said things that like. And he even mentioned in there as a game developer, like pro pro choice or pro life game developer that he didn't talk to his team with. Like if he would have brought this up to his actual company and either, you know, told them this is what I'm going to say and let people know that so that they can decide if they want to stay working there or not. But like just to kind of blindside them and just kind of make that like opinion out there just to, to say it, um, especially on some, a very t like a touchy subject like this. Like this isn't something that. Um, this isn't new and this isn't something that's going to go away anytime soon, um, but it is something that's very touchy and it's 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 hard to just come out and say an opinion like that. So so nonchalant, you know, just like, oh, yeah. I'm just going to be on Twitter yeah, and, and say it. No problem. Yeah. I mean, par part of my point is people have gotten fired because they on their Twitter account support unionized labor. Mm. Yeah. So it, and and people like. Oh, my God, how can they fire him for that? Because, you know, that's their personal account. And it's like they're not trying. They weren't even trying to unionize at their work. Yeah. Um, and again, I I do not agree with that guy at all. I think he's he was he approached it the wrong way. He did it in a even if he had an opinion, boy, was he. Yeah, yeah. pretty much an ass about it. Um. And I fully support like other companies not wanting to work with him. And he stepped down. He was not fired. Yeah. Um, but it, it does kind of go both ways. And I'm, I'm not trying to say this is a slippery slope or anything like that. Like, oh, this is going to get worse because then everybody's going to get fired for their Twitters. You know, no, that's not the case. It's going to be different every time. But it is an interesting concept that. OK, so a truism that I kind of heard in the past is a guy doing creepy things. The creepiness is like inversely proportional to his hotness in a lot of ways. <laughs> Boyfriend dungeon, if we're going to talk about later, oh notwithstanding. Uh, but still, no, I mean like, and Kelly, tell me if you've heard that before, <laughs> right? Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm not saying it's true. I'm saying a lot of people <laughs> said something like that where somebody can get away with a little bit more creepiness because they're hot. I mean, I'm sure that's a thing. Uh, I'll, I, yeah, it's I'll the hot to, crazy skill, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe when I was younger. I don't know. I, okay, creepy. Like, I, again, in the, I'm not, like, I'm gross, I'm not weird, saying it's like, true. I'm saying that I've heard this and I've heard a lot of people say this. Um, the other thing too, chat pointed out is that the guy actually on, I remember seeing this, I was trying to pull it up but on Twitter. He actually has his title under his personal um, account. Like it literally says like yeah. CEO of, you know, Tripwire. And then he's definitely a lot more. So that's almost like a brand repping. account. Like that's not even necessarily like a personal yeah. account. It's like a brand account. Yeah. He's a lot more repping his comp company there in that Twitter account. But, but anyway, my, my point is, is it's kind of a truism. It doesn't mm. apply everywhere and stuff like that. But I think it's kind of similar to here is is it seems like that. People are more making a fuss about what you say on Twitter if it's a more controversial thing. And that's, I, that's kind of human nature anyway. Yeah. So that's yeah. kind of a moto yeah. statement, master of the obvious. 
but at at the same time, the guy seems like he was a real jerk and didn't seem to care yeah. about what other people actually go through. Yeah. Just wanted to like promote his beliefs and throw it out there in a pretty like crass way. Yeah. I think if if I, I think there's a way to say things from, you know, uh, uh, that's a hard one to say the other way. <laughs> yeah. It, it, I, I think it could have been, I'll say softened. Um, there, there, there's definitely a way to say, you know, this is, you know, I, I, I support this, you know, I, I know this is not a popular belief, but I, I, my company doesn't stand behind this. Like I, I, I would never, you know, you know, push my beliefs on anybody, blah, blah, blah. But, Here's how I feel like there's there's a way to say things and then there's a way to be like, yeah, I'm just an asshole. And Basically. here's how I do, you know, like. Yeah, you know, it is the way he said it was. Yeah. yeah. At the same time, Twitter only gives you X amount of characters. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. So that's true. That's what happened this week. No, but the other the other part that's obviously going to keep finding out about more of just the actual law that happened. But uh, the Justice Department has sued the state of Texas now over that ruling uh, based on another case uh, that they're presenting. So this is not going to go away right now anytime soon. Uh, so we'll just kind of follow yeah. it. And if we see any other game related news to it, um, we'll definitely talk about it as well. But um, yeah. basically just want to bring that up. I actually it, find that kind of fascinating because like it's the Justice Department, but it's not the Supreme Court. No. So it's like. It's because like the Supreme Court already did the ruling and that's what this mm. guy was talking about. Um, and I, I, I said it before the show. You know, we're we're. We're in a pretty bad state where a bunch of crotchety old men, for the most part. Um, uh, are trying to decide what women can do with their bodies and can mm. cannot do with their bodies. Um, because yeah. of what they believe as crotchety old men. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Which makes no sense. I can tell you, I can tell you, I get in trouble if I try to tell my wife, like, <laughs> how to drive. Oh, <laughs> yes. I mean, like, goodness knows <laughs> that I'm not going to get anywhere near where these levels go. Hi. I swear they they are all bachelors. They must be. They cannot understand what it is like to be married. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. On that note, so sorry. I, I am kind of making light of we this. We are apologize, but sometimes humor is well, I also want to say Mudbutt Sally in chat really coming out with like something not sarcastic. I know this is logical? weird. I think someone hacked this, his account. I, I, I don't know what universe world. we're living in. Someone hacked his account. Don't tell him. I like it. Must, I like it this way. Have. I like it. I love it. I mean, uh, I'll go like ban him ways. since somebody hacked his account. Yeah. I'll just ban him. Right so, now. so moving <laughs> on, um, oh, God, Bando we have, probably hacked in. <laughs> we had some conventions this past weekend and we talked about it last week. We said that PAX West was happening. Brian Phoenix Nova was going to be live reporting mm. from, Pax West, uh, he did last week. Uh, he yes. talked a little bit about the, you know, just getting there and showing up and such. Uh, but you were there the whole week. Tell us. I mean, you've, and you obviously have gone to Pax West many times in the past and Pax East and whatever Pax. Um, but yeah, tell us about your experience this year. Let me work backwards. <laughs> Are you going to Tarantino <laughs> this? Is this um, Are you going to tell us first the ending and then go back or no? I don't know. Chris, uh, Christopher Nolan this. Okay. Or something. Uh, <laughs> no, I uh, no, I like, OK, I'm not going to rate them on the level of directors, but either way, they can manhandle a film a hell of a lot better than I can manhandle. Um, Ooh. I, I mean, I was <laughs> inventing it on the spot. Oh, man. Uh, <gasps> not the action. I was expecting <laughs> Uh, Speaking anyway, of abortion, no packs. <laughs> so start a little bit backwards. We're like Sorry. end it. Terrible. We end packs, and we end packs on a tweet from packs saying, "Thanks for everyone that showed up. We really appreciate it. We know it's smaller than normal, um, and because it's smaller than normal, 
those that showed up were going to give you one week early notice for purchasing tickets next year for PAX West and 25% off. Oh, snap. You didn't even hear that part yet. That was a. And Ooh. yet people still complained about that tweet. Going. Where's my refund? And, and OK, now I, I get it. I get now. I'm not against them refunding. They should refund. They should refund people who couldn't go because the health regulations changed on them. Yeah. Even though yeah. from the very beginning, everybody's like, well, you know, I cracked me up. So many people saying that PAX backpedaled on this stuff and changed. No, they said from the beginning yeah. it may change. Yeah. Yeah. If you say from the beginning it changed, if there's a waiver you sign, you check the little box and you're like, I understand that things may change. Yeah. And so I agree. Yeah. Cause we read, I remember and, reading it with Phoenix and we were mm -hmm. like looking at this going, that's kind of interesting how they've worded this. <laughs> Cause yeah. like, yeah, I've like read it's that happening. On lots of concert but... tickets. Yeah. 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 Now with that said, with the changes that happened, mm. I think it's perfectly reasonable for them to refund tickets for those that didn't go yeah. because of the changes. Right. It makes sense to me. Yeah. Uh, but I also am not running that business and that business is directly affected by COVID because their main part of their business, this is Reed pop who puts on packs that I mean, Reed puts on conventions. That's what they do. Uh, and Reed pop puts on pop culture conventions. Uh, but regardless, people were still angry about the tweet. And even somebody else was like, uh, you know, one of the other tweets that they said, and this was an interesting fact that I didn't find out till afterwards, because going there, me and my wife go as a couple. We both enjoy gaming. We both enjoy packs. She was very, very concerned about getting that many people together mm -hmm. in a small area. Understandable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And setting good. indoors. Yeah. <laughs> and she she flat out said, I may not attend some days, especially the busier days, and I may just tour. Seattle, because it's a wonderful city to tour. Yes. And I was like, I understand. I'm going to go every day, but I understand. She went every day. Uh, good because uh, first off, wearing masks seems to be normalized in that city. So tons of people wore masks, even outside, walking around. Not everybody, but I mean, like it's outside. I'm not expecting everybody outside to wear a mask, right? Um, but inside in the convention, you were required to wear a mask. And, uh, while wearing a mask, some of the enforcers, the people that help, uh, run, help run the convention a little bit, uh, they'll remind you like mm -hmm. one guy was saying that he was playing in a tournament and his mask had slipped down. Oh, under his nose a little bit and while playing the tournament he was playing Smash. power washer pc oh <laughs> uh but he was nice he's like Wait, if that's, that's a if tournament that's a how do you play power washer tournament i listen i don't know oh i don't know God. if it's a speed thing or a cleanliness i'll have to thing. check that out next year I'm, in, a, I'm just curious on how that works not not saying I would I mean, participate. Cleanliness I, I totally was wouldn't participate. a big thing. About oh my god, you're totally going to be there playing. <laughs> I haven't bought it yet, but, but I've looked at it a wait. few times. <laughs> <laughs> Next game of but, the moment, my friends. Power washer PC. Oh man. Right. Continue. Uh, <laughs> but I, I would like to say that uh you know, he said that even while he was doing that. Um, his mask slipped down and uh, an enforcer while he was playing the game tapped him on the shoulder and reminded him that hey pull your mask up uh, I experienced this myself where I was walking along and I didn't think anything about it I have my coffee every morning I got my, my iced coffee I've been walking along and I'd have my mask on and uh, I, it was super easy. I pull my mask down real quick, take a drink, put it back on. And a forester stopped me and said, listen, you can't do that. If you go over here to this area, that's the designated area where you can eat and drink with your mask off. And at first I was like, 
that I'm like, it was off for a brief. Second. And then I was like, Nope. Yeah. These are the rules. Don't, mm-hmm. don't be that guy. Yeah. Just. And I said, thank you. Thank you for enforcing. I appreciate it. And I walked over there and I fished my drink and did that pretty much for the rest of the show. Yeah. And 93% of the people there were vaccinated. Wow. That's wild. And well, and I think part of it was because if you weren't vaccinated, you had you could not enter unless you showed a recent test showing that you were COVID free. And like it can't be a test from a week ago. Yeah. Like they had a kind of chart. Being... They had a chart saying this type of test taken this time. You get the results approximately here and it's good for two days yeah, or something like that. And then you have to take another or if you take a rapid test, you know. And so it would be arduous to get the tested. And I sympathize with those with children because children who can't, uh, under a certain age cannot get vaccinated and yeah. would have to essentially take the test to get in. Yeah. And so I get why 93% were vaccinated because they, uh, they and very intentionally made it very difficult to attend unless you're vaccinated positive or negatives there. And there's both. Believe me, yeah. there's both. Um, I, I imagine, you know, Kelly, you as a mother of oh, yeah. two precocious young women. Precocious is an understatement. <laughs> yes. I believe you've used worse words before. They're so we well are mannered. not allowed to say that. They are awesome. No, they're wonderful. I love them to death, but. Yes, I I am not their parents, so I think they're wonderful. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah. They're great. No, but could you imagine yeah. getting like every day another COVID test with them, where so, like you know up their nostrils and ugh. yeah, that so my poor kids uh, have to have a COVID test once a week in school. They get tested right. every single week, and they're like they tickled my nose again, and um, mm-hmm. it's for the safety of others. So. Knowing that it's it's definitely unpleasant, you know, and that right. this is going to be a memory that they have for the rest of their lives. That oh, remember when I was in school and I had to get tested? Mm-hmm. And they tickled my nose every week. Um, I, you know, I'd really have to weigh: is it? First of all, they're too young to really get anything out of packs. But if right. they, if they were under was it 12 years old and really loved video games and really wanted to go i'd really have to weigh you know is this something i want to subject them to right or and also or is can, it something you can that you just go one day yeah because yeah. of the restrictions yeah. like yeah. okay well, you know, I'm, i understand for a yeah. day i don't know about that but. yeah <laughs> right like on an airplane yeah. and then an airplane back but uh, but also well i mean I, you it, do other things fact, while you were there you would Fact like the do is, Space Needle and, you know, yeah. and do the underground tour. I highly recommend yeah. the, underground the underground tour. tour. I've heard I mean, that that's amazing. Do you know that, like, like, the, like the city mm. of your namesake that Seattle mm. also burned down? Huh. What? I didn't know that. Right. I didn't know that until I took the underground tour. Anyway, we're talking about facts. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, but you I, I, other I, things I, while you, you did know, there. For me, I, I probably wouldn't take my kids to something like that because... Even vaccinated people can get COVID now and yeah. they can pass it on to my right now child, and then so. in the COVID world uh, yeah. that we were in, which then is that's why I wouldn't. That's why I didn't go, which yeah. is the important next part. So yeah. people that have been to PAX are very familiar with like the enforcers, like compress the line. Like, seriously, people, uh, let me tell you, and maybe this is an OCD thing, uh, more like COVID needle. What about Sally says? I yeah, know. Uh, they got glass floors on the outside now, so you can look nope, straight down. Pass. Like I have uh, not been, uh, nope, I have not nope. been up there. I don't. Nope. Know. I have, nope. I nope. Seen it. Nope. Oh my god. Oh, I I'm can't, willing to oh, give it a shot. I can't I'm even drive over certain like bridges COVID floors but where myself. we live. I no. But anyway, so so that's the next part. Not only vaccinated and tests to get in, masks everywhere. But back in the day. Uh, because space was such a priority there, uh, the enforcers all the time compress the line. If you see an empty spot in front of you, you move forward and you step Get into off it. your Let phone me- and move. Yeah. <laughs> well, not even just off your phone. Cause, cause it's not moving at this point. Mm. This is, this is 
the line is not going anywhere, but you're just packing as many people in small space as you can. Uh, standing up, moving forward, can't sit down. You can sit down near the beginning, but at a certain point, they're like, stand up, move forward, compress the line. And uh, let me tell you, if you're like OCD about like, I'm in a line, this person's in front of me, this person's behind me, that doesn't exist. Like if there's an empty space, someone moves forward and fills it, Mm -hmm. even if that means passing you, because usually these lines are like, 15 or 20 people across. And there are yeah. people that absolutely will sit down on one of the benches and that's where they're fine. And a hundred people will compress past them. Yeah. You like the concept of lines is completely different. And all of that, all of that was completely gone. Wow. People were at comfortable distances from each other while in line. Never once did I hear them say compress the line. It was very, very comfortable so far so that my wife, uh, again, went every day instead of uh, skipping out a day. And the other reason why the lines were comfortable is because the attendance was down. So not only did they say that they were going to have less people attend, they were not going to sell as many tickets, but they didn't sell out. So while normally there was about 70,000 people a day, Mm -hmm. Uh, the first day felt like 20,000. Wow. It was very empty of people. Not so empty where like, like it was, it was much quieter too. But it wasn't so empty like there wasn't any people. There was people all over the place. They just like, you just weren't like walking yeah. along mm-hmm. like this, trying to get to the next place or dodging between people. Uh, like my wife loves it when I wear a big backpack and she can just go between people. And I can't do that without like knocking them out. Um, but, but so once you got in, had, had, yeah, like, it tell was us good. about PAX. Yeah. <laughs> PAX was safe. Good. So I'll leave That's it. That's awesome. That. Okay. PAX was what? Safe. Good. Yes. No, safe. safe. Um, there were no, no, no big developers or studios other than Bandai Namco. And they were showing off a single game, Tales of, I don't know, Destruction or something. Tales of the Air. It was a sequel to their Tales. Uh, it was a Monster Hunter type game. So I didn't really, I wasn't really interested mm-hmm. in it. I didn't really touch it. And I kind of like said, oh, yes, it looks pretty. And it's Monster Hunter-ish. And I'm moving on. And they had a line and they had lots of kiosks for people to play it. Uh, it looked beautiful. I mean, cool. looked like a great game. Great graphics are all. Um, but they were the largest of all the publishers by far. Uh, there's almost no comparison between them and the next biggest developer down, because the next developer down was probably like a developer with five people. So it was amazingly awesome for playing games because there was almost no lines at the, any of the booths. You could go up to the de- developers, actual developers, not wow. just like booth people that are there to show you the game, the actual, actual developers, developers. That's talk, awesome. him, talk to them about the game. My wife walked up to developer Lords of Solitaire. Fun little game. I've heard about it from other, some other places. It really, it's standard solitaire game, but it, adds it layers of abstraction to a point where you don't even see numbers or suits. Uh, it's like two 99 on the eye devices, right? My wife liked it. She bought it. Nice. She ran into a bug. She came in there and told the bug to the developer the next day. Awesome. The actual developer. She has since been writing up a bug report because she's been able to replicate it. And she's going to send that to an email to <laughs> She no plans your ticket. Nice. No lot. Now, what other she place? She posting the Trello board right now. <laughs> <laughs> almost, almost. What other place do you get to do that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's what this whole thing was like. And the panels were the panels. There were there. Okay, so everything, 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 everything was smaller. The developers were smaller. The lines were smaller. The 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 amount of space that you could even just walk in was smaller. They they had areas closed off because they just didn't have enough people there, uh, vendors, exhibitors, or yeah. actual people walking around. So the, but also 
Uh, the number of panels was smaller, but the panels that I went to were fantastic. But I mean, it also like, were, seems like that's almost ideal. Like I, I know right now, like obviously it's because it has to be, but the way that like a lot of the gaming yes. that we do, at least I do now is all mostly indie indie devs because like all these yes. AAA games are really just breaking my heart really in my wallet. So it's like all these indie devs come out and they have really neat games on either steam or Epic or somewhere uh, HIO. And it's like, you can like play these really cool games. And it seems like you went there this year and those were the largest developers were the indie devs. And it's like, you get to like right. talk to them and play with them and, you know, really now, experience that, which I think would probably be really cool. Now the secret is, is you can do this at any packs. Yeah. Because they always have indie developers of various sizes they they're very friendly with their booths. Their booths aren't the cheapest, but still they're they're friendly enough for indie devs. Um, and uh, a lot of times with the larger developers that are with Activision Blizzard and Microsoft and Sony and Nintendo and you know EA and all this stuff that is is almost like this giant light for all the moths and everybody goes over there, and you still get time to stand in line and talk to the indie devs. Mm. So that still kind of exists. Uh, like I said, the panels are fantastic. There were less of them, but each of the ones that we went to, I mean, there was a lot of people showing up to the panels yeah. and there was a lot of great information and the information isn't just because you know, everybody's like, oh, the panels, it's just devs talking. Well, no, no, no. The panels are about gaming. It's like our podcast. We're not always talking about the same thing. You know, we talk about a president of game developer company that tweets something dumb and gets, you know, has to step down from his company because of the Texas abortion law. You know, that's not talking about a game yeah. directly, you know, and it's very much the same way with these panels where there's a lot that they're talking about. Empowerment of women um, walked into a great panel. Uh, 100 games that you must know how to play. Hmm. And it's not the best games. It's not the games that are the most important. It's just the game that when you find out that Mike hasn't played this game, <laughs> that you're like, what are you doing, Mike? You need to go play this game right now because something about it is important to games as an overall structure. Right. Like maybe that is the genesis of this particular mechanic. Uh, well, it itself may not be a great game, may not be the most important game, but this mechanic it introduces is you heavily used every well since good to know the Genesis. And it was interesting because this was actually a. Uh, what's the site? Board Game Geeks. It's a post that was done on that in 2015 by one Mike Selinker. Uh, who uh, is the president of Lone Shark Games. And. I have actually known Mike. I known of Mike uh, yeah, right previously. Right. And I just walked into this panel because I thought the title was cool. And then Mike Seliker was given the panel. I was like, this is awesome. And I listened to him and I was like, cool. And it's just that accidental, like showing up and finding somebody that you're aware of that's giving it. Uh, and then I find out that, this is the first time he's changed that list since 2015. So I accidentally walked into his first refresh of that list in six years. And he was doing things like he took off Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Blasphemy. And replaced it with Link to the past. Legend of Zelda, a Link to the Past randomizer. Mm -hmm. uh, because it was such a cool concept of randomizing that for speed runs. And he, who is, he had recently learned about it and, or he took off Diablo two uh, action RPG because Hades action RPG. So it was, it was a really cool panel stuff like that really existed. Um, and uh, they had their concerts. I didn't go to the concerts. They didn't have as many bands there. They did have Master Sword, which was a metal band. You probably would have loved them, Mike. That would have been awesome. Uh, I saw some of their videos at their booth as I was walking by, and I was like, Mike would love that. Um, and then, you know, just other than that, it, it was PAX. It was PAX, but smaller. In fact, the most 
frequent thing that I heard or told people is it was very much like the first PAX South. It was the first of its area. It didn't, it was January ish. So like none of the big names really had anything to talk about because they kind of pardon the pun blew their load on Christmas. And okay. All right. I mean, accurate. (laughs) Um, so the first pack South was very much the same way. And that's what it felt like. And it was fun. Was there problems? Yes. Could they have done things better? Absolutely. Was there people upset and for legitimate reasons? Yes. Packs, but minuscule says runner diva out of chat. So the only thing uh, that I assume that she, she was uh, seeing some type of footage or maybe went, she says tiny. The only thing that I would have I hope she's still talking about as packs. a Pax non goer. Cause I didn't get to go. Right. Um, I really enjoyed last year's discord server where they really had everything there right. because they had to do online. It was, that's what they did. Um, I missed that this year. I looked for it. Couldn't find it. They have their own packs, uh, actual discord server, official discord server, but it wasn't for like the convention right. itself. So I, I really missed that. I wish they would have kept that up. Um, and that kind of goes into the nice thing is they did do a lot of digital panels. Yeah. Which were available through their three Twitch channels. Yeah. 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 They, they still have those up for sure. Um, but which basically uh, I'm not. I'm not positive, but when I. I don't know the right word if is subscribed or whatever. When I did my Twitch channels, it was a one time fee, not a reoccurring monthly fee. So I paid like. Two ninety nine, got it for life. Yeah, uh, so totally worth that. So Dragon Con is another convention that happened this weekend, uh, which I also did not get to attend, which is saddening. Wait, that happened? It did. Uh, this is the second year that I've missed, and it's deeply hurt my heart. Um, it's just, it's, it's sad. But uh, with that said, I literally had someone look at me when they said, when I said I was from the Atlanta area, and they said. You flew across the country for this while Dragon Con's going on. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, it's totally, totally two different conventions. And you've been to both. It is. Uh, I haven't been to PAX, but I'm pretty much aware of what, you know, on the most part of what PAX is. I haven't experienced it, though. I don't know what the experience of PAX is yet, but I'm going to change that eventually. Uh, but yeah, Dragon Con did happen this week. Uh, another thing that was kind of disappointing is that they also didn't have like the online presence that they did the year before. Uh, which obviously online for them was completely new uh, this past year. And then this year they said they were going to do that. They still had Dragon Con TV. Uh, you could pay $10 to do that, which I don't know. Dragon Con TV to me is like the things that I always see on uh, while we're doing the masquerade, like watching the masquerade. And it's not very great. It's just just it's some content, but it's not, you know, anything to 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 pay 10. I don't know. I just I didn't feel like doing that. Um, but uh from all the feedback that I've been following, because I basically lived vicariously through all of the, the attendees that I've seen um, from either, you know, the the um, Reddits that I've read, like the Facebook groups and our discord groups and all that fun stuff. Like I've been reading all of this and it's very much similar to the 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 sense that you kind of gave. Uh, so and, and obviously one of our own members, uh, Demurin De Bruno, uh, he also attended because his wife is a uh, an artist and she has a booth there that they go and hang out with. And uh, so he was there pretty much all, you know, the whole time too. Um, you know, doing the the vendor type thing, not necessarily just going out and having fun the whole time and attending panels. Um, but the same general consensus I've got from everyone was that it was very much nice like it was very like almost like breath like uh, a breath of fresh air because uh like you said their attendees were only like 42,000 I think or something like that you said for packs uh it was pretty much like 44,000 um for Dragon Con and actually Dragon Con Media um they did tweet out a uh, a tweet on this but they said 42 actually had 42,000 uh, for the five day celebration. And they also raised $120,000 for their charity uh, which is really awesome um but they the people that I've talked to were like, this was so great because we got to hang out at these panels and actually see things and, and spend time and, and just enjoy things at a safe distance. Right. Uh, cause typically it is, it's like 80,000, it's like 85,000 people all in the same areas, which they have five hotels. They spread it across outside and everything too. Um, but much like you were saying with PAX, 
you know, they uh, they were requiring vaccinations or tests uh, same way, uh, which is something that they uh, kind of sprung up last moment. Uh, they didn't really say much about their covid protocols until it kind of happened. They just kind of changed it. Uh, so that's a little different than what PAC said initially. Um, but they they had the same kind of things in place. Only difference is held in Georgia, which is a lot different. Um, the mentality of some of the people here, they don't not every, <laughs> I, you walk down the street, not going to see everybody wearing a mask like that's just a thing. Um, but they they did still have a safe con from what I um, what I've read, and what I've heard from people. Uh, and it was still very enjoyable. And that the. Um, you know, like hopefully going like next year, people are like, I wish it was like this light. And I'm thinking like it's the double edged sword. Like you can't have yeah. this light of people, but still have mm-hmm. the same con because yeah. the 80,000 is what pays for some of those panels when those people showing yeah. up, like there's no way to get it pays for, the you know, a Stan show up, Lee yeah. showing up rest in peace um, to show up at a yeah. convention like this when there's only 40,000 people like that. That would right. be great, but it's just yeah. not going to happen. So, um, but yeah, from everything that I've read and everything that I've, I've heard from was, it was great. It was, it was very nice to be able to like, you know, uh, as far as like what Bruno was saying from the vendor hall, like being able to have room, like people could actually mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like visit different artists and see like their booth and talk to the artists and, and not feel like you're being rushed. Like, all right, come on, move through, keep moving. Um, so that was really cool. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's pretty much all I have. I don't really have, you know, cause I didn't attend. I can't, can't, can't really go into my own experiences, but, um, I'm glad to see that they actually did do it and I'm glad that they did it in a safe manner. Uh, and I'm, and I'm really excited. I wish if it, if it wasn't for the fact that I have a new kid, like I would have definitely been there this year being a vaccinated person. Like I would have, I would have done it, uh, and then quarantine afterwards. But, um, you know, hopefully next year things will be a little better and we'll be able to maybe make that jump and be able to hang out that or even PAX. I mean, I'd love to, to go check out PAX as well. So, I mean, there's East 2022, which might be too early. So maybe East 2023. We'll see. We'll see. We'll figure it out. Yeah. But uh, on that Let's note, do it. that is uh, that's what we got for news for today. Uh, so hang out just a few minutes. Listen to a word from our sponsor, Anchor. <laughs> And we're back. What's wrong with the thumb? I don't get that, it. Nobody, nobody's like, oh, oh, <laughs> I'll how, take one. How, how many cookies do I have? <laughs> one cookie. <laughs> nobody oh, does Europeans. that. Europeans, no, Europeans do that. That's, that's one, a European two. Thing. Yeah. It's one, two, three, four. Okay. Yeah. Any Europeans here tonight? That's because that's because <laughs> if you if you switch this around to the other way, it's the same as the bird. But yes, in the yes. UK. So you can do. So it's two, one, two, one. No, you just flipped everybody off. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. Oh, my God. You did. Yeah. Oh, I know. Sorry. It's said two, one. I there didn't. we go. There we go. That now you haven't flipped. Everybody yeah, 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 off. yeah. Sorry. So no, but, yeah. let's <clears> get <throat> into what we've been playing. There, I did it. I danced a little bit. Kelly and I were almost in sync there. <laughs> I'm more of a One day, we're okay. going to choreograph I a was... routine. And it'll be awesome. Yes. And then if you're I listening was... to the podcast, you're going to have to watch us on um, YouTube. If I can ever get them published. We'll talk about that later. Oh, oh, <laughs> All oh, of God. our swearing and whatnot. <sighs> okay, so I was at PAX, so I played a lot of games, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time in each of these. These are games Mark that, that down, uh, Kelly. He said he's not going to spend a lot of time on these. It's 10, 16. Here we go. I mean, you're already delaying. <laughs> put the timer up. No, okay. So the first one I want to talk about is uh Neon Noodles, uh, which is overcooked meets factorial. Uh, I played a little bit of it. Uh you can go get a download demo of it right now. It's also early access for like I think $14.99. It it was it was I've just barely started it. You it's a very easy way to put programming language into robots and make them build menu items uh summoner's fate is looks well, like it's restart also it. for restart the clock it's also on pc uh you got summoner's fate which uh also looks like it's on ipad devices or i devices uh their favorite thing is like do you want to hurl a squirrel at your enemies and hurl a yes. squirrel. i would love yes, to hurl it's many of the squirrels who'd be eating my figs my tomatoes Oh, oh, I can't even. Y'all heard a squirrel. What, which one was that? It was not part of my time. 
you mf her uh, anyway <laughs> sorry no it's, you didn't it's, yield it's an RP- the remainder of your time to me <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a grid-based rpg game that is you, know, you move around and and it's got some cool mechanics it's turn-based it looks very interesting uh cursed to golf golf like G O F. yeah golf okay uh, I really, really like this game. Uh, you die and you go to limbo and you're cursed to golf your way out and you golf around and you hit exploding things. This sounds like an awesome game. I like this already. It's cursed. Fun. To yes, it's very, very fun. I am looking forward to that. Ducks in space. Eh, I mean, ducks in space seems really early. But uh, it was it's it's basically a one person team uh, and his wife is helping out with some of the art and doing some other stuff. And they got tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of levels. And it's kind of a platformer. It's got some cool things with uh, transporters and getting around how ducks have shields and jumping around and shooting at them. Ducks have shields. Uh, so it is kind of interesting, uh, but I think it needs a little bit of work. Harvest Hero Origins. Uh, another one that probably needs a little work, but it's kind of interesting. It's kind of a uh, 2D side view of a horde mode where you have a bunch of enemies coming at you and you and your partner. Uh, it was it was one of those games with the dirty word in it, co-op. Uh, <gasps> and yet my wife still played co-op <clears throat> with me and had fun with it. So they've got something going for them. Awesome. And there's ways to uh, bring your partner back to uh, consciousness if they pass out and everything. It's so your partner passed cute. out? It's very <laughs> it's literally. 8-bit. That's what they call it in Pokemon when your Pokemon like doesn't make it. So now you're calling your wife die. a Pokemon. Okay. Got no, it. my partner. I was just saying Pokemon pass out. See, you can't twist my words. Moving on before that timer goes out. Minotaur Princess. Minotaur Princess. Check this out, please. If you like match three games, check this out. It is very much in the vein of the Scratch Puzzle Hunts. Quest or Marvel's Puzzle Quest. Except the cool thing is, is that there's no automated matching. So when, when you match something and stuff falls down, just because there's three of something, it doesn't automatically match it that way because you're going to match up to like six items before you attack. If you don't need healing, you don't want to match the healing potions. You want to match your attacks or your diff- or your transmute where you transmute them into like okay. a rabbit or a duck or something. So there's yeah. some strategy all of involved. And if you did want to match one of those things, well, you can just flip two of them and they match and you get it. So the taking the auto match out uh, was very controversial, apparently, but really makes this game. So if you're missing the puzzle quest, go check it out. Uh, Lost Circus. I don't even know if this is going to come out. This was one of the booths that is uh, one of the colleges that teaches game development. It was a student project. Oh, was super, super, super fun. Oh, you went around, you got these toys. And these toys could do different things like they could make noise to distract the monster while another toy is unlocking the door. So you can get through it and get parts of the ticket and then get past. Now, the really weird part was at the end, you had to feed your toys to the end boss in order to exit. So that was <laughs> this is like, like all these you gathered all these toys. And these toys are just game. following you. These toys are just following you. The oh, they've Jack done box such a good you, job. And, and you're, now like, you're like, I don't. Bye-bye. Yeah, I don't care about you toys. Feed you to this guy. Okay, like, seriously, nom, if nom, this nom, game nom, ever nom, releases, <laughs> if this, uh, this game is so totally up your alley. Oh, uh, I hope it Day comes Drinker, out. I hope it comes out. It's so much fun. That's so cool. And then my game of the show. It, they, said it was kind of and this is the easy way to think of it it's tetris kind of meets smash brothers it's not really tetris because the the blocks will fall separately and and like well one block stops the other block will keep going if there's space beneath it so i call it puyo puyo for those that know that series plus smash except you can't attack each other all you can do is push the blocks around 
which sometimes can trap the other person. You can even jump on the block and push it down and squish the person. You can push the block sideways and squish them. And if they squish, they have a one time squish. that they can come back as another block and try to squish you. And then they come oh. back. And there's other special blocks, like a block comes down, shoots lasers four ways and destroys a whole bunch of stuff. And there's timing involved in that. Or you can fall into the laser. Uh, there's a black hole block that causes a black hole to come out. And you can bounce the block to the side and move it closer to someone. And if you bounce it, you can activate it earlier than it normally would. Or you can bounce it into like the side that destroys blocks. You can actually destroy it. All of these, it's very... There is levels and levels and levels to the strategy and tactics that goes on this game where you can just have fun and push blocks into each other and squish each other. Me and the wife played this three times and we got to see these two guys that had gone through the line again and again and oh, again wow. and again and again. And they got really good. And we got to see them. Probably there's only five people play. at PAX anyway, so the line wasn't very long. Uh, usually there's about 20 to 30 minute wait to play. Uh, uh, these two guys got to play the developers. What? That is and awesome. I got to see. I got to see tactics that I had. I was like, what? You could do that? Holy. Oh, my God. That was amazing. And. There were times where you thought somebody was going to fall off and they were dashing up into the air and then coming down and almost getting on. So they dashed up in the air again. It was just amazing watching them play. And then there were some times where they couldn't do anything because they were just waiting for something to happen. So there's a taunt button and you play these like little jelly ish guys. Yeah, you, you got these the jellyish right guys that 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 they're a skull inside the jail jelly. So like one of the taunts is that they take their jelly out of the head and kind of bow and then put their head back into the jelly. I mean, <laughs> so so there was this great time where like one of the developers and one of the guys that got really good was just like taunting each other back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, <laughs> waiting for something to come down. That's funny. At any time, there was like 20 to 40 people at any time cheering for this game. And it's just this side little indie game made by students that's cool out of the san francisco area so awesome. go check it out uh you can go and you can find them on steam and wish list them it's called squish you can join their discord and if you join the discord you can get uh access to um some play test stuff as well cool. wow my game of the show i can't wait till that releases and while it is four player and you would think it is couch competitive it has net code in it, so you can play online with other people. Cool. Sweet. So, That's my PAX game. Report. So, uh, Sounds like a game of the I game. haven't really played a whole lot this week. Uh, I did play some Fortnite again, of course, why not? Uh, and I also, the new season's coming up, actually. We have, like, this weekend to to get involved. I gotta get get some stuff done anyway uh so i've also been playing the survival let's talk about this before uh survival is really neat uh, I, I was able to um get to the point where i have like four monkeys now <laughs> and i've been able to train them to do different things so they're now basically automating my building so i have one i take out and i say record actions and i basically pick up an item and then i place it somewhere and he goes all right got it and he like goes and collects these items and drops them somewhere and then I have another one that says, all right, take those items and place them on the workbench. And he's like, all right, got it. And then I have another one that says, all right, cool. I can now I'm going to build anything that's on this bench that's available to build. And he's like on it. And then another one takes the items that are completed, delivers them. Well, actually, one of the other ones that already is collecting stuff will collect whatever's built, move it to a uh, item that needs to build. He puts the ingredients in there. And then the one who builds runs over and builds the thing when it's ready. So it's like I have this like whole automation thing going on now at this point. And uh, the game's really neat for that. And and I know we didn't talk about today, but there's another game that you were showing me earlier, which I think you may show off soon. Uh, but uh, it's just it's really neat to see, like, not only just automation, like uh, like, you know, I click a button, I can tell this person to do that. It's like also recording, like almost like macros, like you literally have to, to mm -hmm. guide them step by step in how I want this person or this monkey to do something so that I can really control the automation that's happening, not just like, oh, click and drag, and this is just going to just repeat over and over. 
Um, so it was really neat. I liked it. Uh, I finally got to the point where I figured out how to get iron, which was like a big thing. I, like I like you. I was like stuck. I couldn't figure out how to get oh, anything else. No. What? Uh, what is easy? Now? What is easy? It's iron. It's all about the iron, baby. So uh, it's harder. To, maybe you have to do a video on who has the best iron. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> so then uh, so I got that built my raft started going. I mean, it's it's, it's my game. It's it's the kind of game I like. It's 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 a, it's a jam. I so. cannot wait until you play Neon Noodles. That game. Yeah. Neon yeah. Noodles. So oh, actually I did. I did play Automate Chef. Uh, Automated Chef, I think it is. Uh, I did play that, which is also an autom- an automation game based on restaurants. So I did play that for a little bit. And uh, it's different. It's it's not like you're overcooked, but it's not an automation like like satisfactory. It's it's something in the between that. I don't know. It's very interesting because um, you only have a certain amount of money you can spend. That's how you win the map. Like you can only spend so much uh, to make the kitchen correct. So you have to try to place things in a certain path like I can't remember what game it was but it's like you have like a certain way to build something and you want to try to do that the most efficiently so that you spend the less money or the least amount of money so it's it's interesting on that um but that's really cool that's pretty much all I've been playing and I'll toss the pillow to you Kelly uh <clears throat> I, I, you should throw it down the, the body pillow oh, of yeah, John Romero <laughs> thanks Mike <laughs> um I played the coin game so have y'all been to like I'll throw out a name like are you sitting outside there. of Kroger or something or like what do you mean like Dave and Buster's have you you've been to Dave and Buster's yes. before yeah okay and yeah you put that, the quarter in and it like pushes quarters yeah, down and it goes and, click, 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 and then there's the the sweeper thing that like, oh yep. there's yep. a yeah. game for that oh I knew you were gonna like this that's why I was you totally so, got his attention this may be the next game of the moment um so you can play in birthday mode where your uncle's thrown your birthday and your uncle actually owns the place. And so you have unlimited money. Uncle, yeah. yeah. Um, your uncle asks you to come sit on his lap. <laughs> mm. I haven't gotten that far. I'm still playing in birthday. Well, you haven't been playing long enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but you get to play that game and it, I'm going to tell you right now, it's just as addictive as it is. Those are like my life. favorite games to play at the casino, like on a cruise. Like you. Yes. I sit there and just just constantly. That's like only I had to win. So yeah. <laughs> um, the ski ball. Yeah. I, they call it something else. Uh, yeah, ski. You can play ski ball. Oh, the claw game the claw. where you, 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 you like. Yeah, you're like. Err! And then you drop the claw and then you get like a stuffed animal. In this one, it, it's Larry's. That's the name of the. So is it the coin game is like the coin games, like games that are all coins, I guess? No, the name of the game is the coin game. But because I think it was based off just that initially, it was it was created in 2019, but it's still um, in. uh, Hold on, it is. It was like now now that I've been playing it. I can't tell you. Anyway, yeah. So uh, I think it's ten ninety nine, um, but it's still like beta. So okay. they're still developing, it or it's stalled. So yeah, or we'll never it, see it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or, no, as long as you get your money out of it now, I mean, that's really that, all that matters. And I've already me, gotten my money about it now because if I had put all the coins that I put in just the coin game already, I would have spent more than $10. Uh, but there's, there's other levels and stuff to it where you like get in a golf cart and you drive around the Island. And so uh, it's so far really fun. And I'm, I've been enjoying it. Cool. Sweet. Mm-hmm. It's early well, access. I think our, I think our last thing to talk about is the game this week. Mm-hmm. That was the game of the moment. <laughs> This is new. That's a new one. That's a new sound. Uh, I've played all three of them for you before. It's just I haven't played them since. Okay. That was nope. number three. Game of the moment. Number one As was an editor. Before. I haven't heard that one. Yeah. Well, I'll fix that. No, game of the moment this week. Was a game that I've been waiting for a very long time because I've seen it many, many packs. I have been waiting for this to come out and they 
on the positive side of Blizzard were similar to like Blizzard, where they said, we're going to release it when it's done. And then they released it this last week with no fanfare. They just dropped it on Steam for $14.99 and on Xbox Game Pass. So if you have that, you can pick it up. Under your subscription, I we need to stop saying it's free because it's yeah, free. that's true. That's true. That's true. Um, Nothing's free under your subscription, and it goes away after a while, kind of like Netflix, you know, in and out. Um, I liked it so much, and I wanted to support them so much that I actually purchased it under Steam, even though I had been playing it on Xbox Game Pass. And it's one of those games that just makes Mike go, "Huh?" That's like that meme. Which, the guy like. Like, yeah, well, yes, Drew uh, is his name. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> yes, blinking white guy is Drew Scanlon. But it is a game where it's one of those fusion games that, that uh, I've <laughs> played before. We've seen others. It's absolutely a game. It's definitely fusion a game. games uh, it that is, Brian has played before. Just make sure you yes. wrote that down. I want to make sure we can come back. To yeah, that. like 13 Aegis Rim. Uh, no, it's it's a dating sim and it is a dating sim. Absolutely. It's also a dating sim where. So far, just about everybody I have dated or worked towards dating. Eventually, or sometimes even immediately in the case of Sunder. Has something about them that's not quite good. Yeah, sometimes really bad. Yes. So uh, very much like real life. Like, in I was some ways. literally about to say that just like real life. Almost like yeah. if it was like a dating simulator. Weird. Yes, exactly. Hmm. And that's half the game. Get the the Bruno other Bruno half of the game that. is that you're leveling up in Get an RPG dungeon called the Dunge, where you are battling your insecurities and these monsters that get coalesced out of your subconscious, essentially. Now, what makes it interesting, though, is that the weapons that you use in the dunge are people that you've been dating that can transform into weapons. Don't think Different about it. Swords, just, just daggers, just, just clubs, go with it. Just axes. Go with it. They're called they're they're able to transform. You're not able to transform. So you're called a wielder. Did you say you go in with your axes or your X's? Both. OK. If your ex likes you enough and they're an axe and they're al- they're allowing you to wield because you can only wield by consent. Yes, yes, then yes. Yes. You can go into the dungeon with your X axe. I, I have a question. Then this may yes. be I may be like. This may be really too early, but mm. I, and I know that you played it or long. too late after all that sake. Yeah, true. Yeah, that's I blame it on the sake. Um, did uh, you uh, do you ever actually like. Games you did. Culminate. Like. The not relationship yet. consummate, consummate is the number well, that you're looking for. Not, or no, number consummate is really no. Nah, yeah, culminate is uh, not the word I should be like. I, uh, where are we going with is this? Like, do, <laughs> she wants to know do you f- if any you can have do sex f- any with the weapons. Them. Yeah, does that uh, happen? Good thing you're editing this one. I uh, yeah, that, that's I know, and that's why the only reason I said it. So okay, so. Uh, the, as far as I've gotten is as far as we've done in our sass oh, plays love. boyfriend dungeon, Sweet. which make I be okay. slept love. next to. I slept next to and I cuddled with a number, another woman called because I play a woman in this one. Uh-huh. You play woman or man or pronoun of they them. Uh, and I slept next to and cuddled with a dagger by a, a woman that transforms into a dagger named Valeria. Nice. I approve. So you that. the closest next closest. to cuddle. I approve. And cuddled. She was. Although, interestingly very enough, sharp. she remained in dagger form. And to be clear, when you grab a weapon, you're basically holding their hand. I, I, Sounds I, like high school says, oh, God, Bando. The, the high level of this game is like completely just WTF. Mm. Awesomeness. 
like listening to you without knowing the context is just what, so what the fuck. And it's really great because when you're doing the dating simulator, it's very much you have your phone, you walk around this map, you have conversations with people that are multiple choice. Uh, I am very, very impressed by the multiple choice sometimes seems kind of out of character. But after you choose it, some of the responses that because like there was this one where like, say she's beautiful. Well, you're playing a shy person and that's not something you would normally do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you say it and then you say you feel breathless that you were so bold. You know, it, it was very much in character, the the additional text. And that is pretty much stock dating simulator, except for well done. Very, very well done. And then the dungeon is three quarter isometrics moving around real time action RPG uh, using move sets that are like, you know, hit X twice and hit Y twice. And X is your light attack and Y is your strong attack or dodge. And you confuse the enemies around you as a special move with this particular weapon. So the <laughs> 100% Brian love this game. No, it's a fun <laughs> game. Uh, the I really think that if you like dating simulators, you're going to have fun with this game and you can set, you can set the RPG action RPG to easy mode. If you like action RPGs and you're not turned off to use an appropriate phrase by the dating simulator part, you're going to have fun in the action RPG part. Yeah. Both of them. Hey, let's face it. If you get a really good printer, it's really good at printing. If you get a really good scanner, it's really good at scanning. But if you get the printer scanner, it's going to be reasonable at both. And it will suit the needs of most people. And it's not necessarily going to be fantastic. At this both. analogy is So is that how perfect. you do relationships? It is perfect. Is that, no, is that what you No, that's how that's how I describe games, because that's okay. what this is, okay. is a game. And and like Kelly said, because Kelly's played a little bit of this game. I have. I have. I have. What? And I'm really bad. Wait about a minute. Wait oh, a minute. Where did I you told see that this. part? You I haven't told said this me, was... you haven't told me this. Oh, no. No, we I, told like you we this. We talked about at the very beginning of the game of the moment. I did I not even told... pick that up. And I was so bad. Shocker at that the... you missed yes. something. <laughs> I, I was so bad when you're in the dunge and you have to like. <laughs> kill mm -hmm. all the thing no i i was so right. bad at that like that's when i was like so is this the game that you guys have been secretively talking yes. about behind my back but <laughs> yes. it's not as good as the because other games so we've been talking secretly oh about behind your back wow. yeah. yeah well i am sorry brian it's a good game i think it's just not up my alley i think yeah yeah well, i think it could I be up your alley is, if you pick the right person one. apparently if i pick the right sword oh god oh no 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 wrong alley wrong alley <laughs> Sorry. I thought your dog just I touched you. I literally with her thought nose. Mike Myers behind her like touched her. I was <laughs> like, I knew it. <laughs> no, so I'll I'll just end this with Kelly. You got to keep playing it. Oh, just yeah. put just oh, well. no, just put the combat down to easy. Mm. And I That's honestly I think, I honestly think that you're going to enjoy the story. And you're going to have some fun on it. And again, I do want to stress to everybody. The relationships in this can be rough. They have a trigger warning at the beginning. There yeah. are there are characters that are not super nice. There are characters that will gaslight. There are characters that will be kind of creepy. And I think they tread well during all of this. But if that's something that you don't want to interact with, then Just don't, don't play, play the game. game. That's cool. <laughs> don't play the game like like Mike. Mike's not going to play. I'm this not going to play that game. Because not he, interest uh, me in we, the least. We are trying to open his mind up to these. New I mean, I, I'm glad that you're so fun about this game, but I'm. Yeah, it's it's not my thing. No, I, I have a blast with it. There's no building. I mean, there was you got me almost at crafting. Yeah, but. yeah, there was. There uh, was, that, a, little that was a weird thing. It. Talk about the crafting while I get some more cocktail. So you can pick up uh, <laughs> various odds and ends while you're going around wire and sugar. Uh, pieces of plastic, pieces of glass. And you can do that to just do some super light, not intensive, yeah. not not very engaging. I'll, I'll be honest, not very engaging crafting in your apartment. 
Uh, the main part about it is it gives you a reason to use these things that you picked up and then you can craft them and you can give them to someone as gifts. And part of what you're trying to do is you're trying to find out what gift of what I can craft is the perfect gift for this person over here. And I found the perfect gift for one of the people. Um, and then, of course, Sunder. And we talk a lot about Sunder because he is. He's like a bro dude he that is, wants to date as many women as he can. He is definitely a bro dude, if that's a term. Um, and he wears a leather jacket with spikes on the shoulders. And that's it. Nothing under it. Well, yeah, no, shirt, he's just, just a jacket. abs. He's like 15 triangular abs all the way down. And this jacket. And then when I found out that I could craft a leather jacket, I'm like, well, F and duh, that's the perfect gift for Sunder. Uh, anyway, so that's crafting. And there's really not much to it. It's not a big. Yeah, yeah it was really like you kind of got my attention. You're like, oh, crafting. And then it was like. I'm going to mix five pieces of sugar with one piece of string and I'm going to make a pizza. Oh, no, wire. Make it was pizza. wire. One piece wire. of wire. Wire, like, wire and what? sugar was a pizza. What I mean, the? Sugar I, and I, wire, pizza. I will admit the game is fun looking if you're into like a dating sim. Like it's a different approach to that. That's cool. I'm not necessarily trying to go play this because like the parts that I did like about it were not like the main focus of the game. Yeah. So. That's the probably texting. Why the texting was hysterical. <laughs> Again, it, hysterical. The texting it's was the funny. Sure. I loved the it's, texting. It's the printer scanner problem. Yeah. It's not going to be best. The printer best scanner. either. The printer, printer scanner problem. problem. I'm going to use that in the rest of my life, too. So uh, I mean, <sighs> like, you know, but all right, it is a fun game. People should at least give it a shot. Let's uh, especially on shorts. Xbox Game Pass. Mm. Uh -oh. There we go. So short news of the week. <laughs> if you are like me, a Rick and Morty fan, you guys were pretty impressed and shocked by Christopher Lloyd uh, in his in the new Rick and Morty skit. Also with Jaden Martell, a kid from Stranger Things and a lot of other movies and stuff. Uh, but it's what did just a tweet. Yeah. So it was a tweet by Adult Swim uh, named C-132 hashtag Rick and Morty. And literally, there's been a few of these now, and it's basically Christopher Lloyd as Rick, which is funny because movies imitate art, imitate movies now, TV show. Because uh, literally, Christopher Lloyd was like who Rick was modeled after because of Back to the Future, which he played in a long time ago. Uh, so now he's actually playing Rick, and it's like this. It's almost weird and awkward because you're like, Morty, is this Marty. is this really going to be something they haven't announced there's any live action movie coming uh, but they keep showing all these teaser trailers there's about three of them now yeah. go check them out they're posted by adult swim twitter yeah uh, i see i think one interesting thing too is is a lot of people are like oh it'd be great if we had a live action rick and morty in the future and starring him but also adult swim a one of the things i said earlier is adult swim has enough money to do that yes they do but b uh someone smarter than me uh, pointed out that Adult Swim has done this type of teasing in the past with no payoff whatsoever. Uh, also, I'd like to point out that there is somebody, maybe only one person out there, that I just said the Morty Marty thing and just blew their mind. <laughs> but it's oh, going to be just a single person. So my bad. It's not the kid from Stranger Things. He is from It. And I thought he was from Stranger Things. So that's why I thought he it's, got the role in It. But you're oh, right. It's definitely It. And then some other movies you, I've chat. seen with him at. Uh, um, thanks for chat. Like, so oh, God, God Bando on Twitch. So, yeah. Yes. God Bando on chat. And, I, and I, I've been mentioning that. I think I maybe said that last time. But because we're, we're broadcasting out to YouTube, Twitch, and Trevo now. So we're going to, if we do mention that, we're going to try to call out the platform they're on. Because obviously, like. You're probably on one of the See, platforms I'm going like, what? <laughs> doing the exact opposite. I'm just saying chat. So it's platform agnostic. Yeah. Yes. Sure. Anyway, <laughs> next. Uh, I'm Mike's the host. We'll go with what he says. Sure. So there was this developer who had a bug in this game. Go ahead and drink. This is going to go over 40 years later. Fix the bug in this game. 
Now, first of all, we're talking about 40 years later. The game was actually in a magazine for TRS 80s. And it was in <laughs> this um, uh, the Captain 80, literally Captain 80 book of basic adventures. It was written in basic and he wrote it and it was an Arctic adventure thing by a developer with the last name of McCracken. Best part of this whole story uh, ends up that it was just uh, ends up that the Release bug didn't the just make it okay. unwinnable. <laughs> it actually made the game unplayable and it was simply a typo where he was missing an O. He couldn't fix it right away because, you know, he had trouble finding it because of digital archives of the magazine. He was able to find it and fix it. I went over because two interruptions. <laughs> So yes. sorry, about everyone's <laughs> favorite. I'll still drink to it. Everyone's favorite pyramid scheme. Uh, pyramid scheme star. Uh, what's it called? Star Citizen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, uh, that is they, Scientology. <laughs> star Citizen. Same thing. They have kinetics. I don't know. So if you're not familiar with Star Citizen, it is a, a gimmick that will never be released. It's a game that is a full of promise of of things that will never actually become anything. The closest thing to this is No Man's Sky. Uh, so if you're interested, let me actually start my timer. Uh, but if you're interested, play No Man's Sky. They actually just released a new uh, expansion, which was apparently really awesome. Uh, but Star Citizen, unlike that, where they don't have a roadmap and they have never promised that they're ever going to finish this game. Uh, and it won't. Uh, they actually got in trouble because they were selling. They were selling concept ships. So you could buy a <laughs> ship, but not only could you just buy ships, you could buy a ship that hasn't been released yet as a concept art type of ship. So in the UK, this got brought up. Uh, they filed a complaint with the ASA regarding cloud Imperium practices of selling concept ships for pr- uh, purposes of funding star citizens, long and rocky development. Uh, and basically they got a slap on the wrist and said, like, basically cut that shit out. That's what this article says from Kotaku. Uh, so they <laughs> now reject redacted that. Oh, you can't you can't buy concept ships anymore. So, I mean, I hate to say it, but. Aren't all of their ships concept ships? You know, Um, I wasn't going to say that, but. I mean, yeah, you can play them in a very limited fashion. You can do more than just walk around them like you used to. But Mm. mm, sorry. That's fun. Got to restart that timer for Kelly. (sighs) Do you have an Xbox One controller? I do. Are you frustrated? with having issues playing it with your Xbox Series S or Xbox No, I don't have one of those. I just have it for my PC. Well, don't worry. Microsoft is coming out with a controller firmware update. Nice. Whoa, what? Uh, So they're going to... The biggest feature is the Bluetooth Low Energy BLE uh, for the older controllers. Uh, it makes it easier to switch from Xbox One to other consoles in different systems. It includes the Windows 10, iOS 15, and Android devices. Oh my God. I The fact that you actually have an Xbox controller is yes. Um, I think he's got a 360 one. I got an Xbox no, this one. Is, Xbox this one. is uh, Xbox one, but it's, it's a wired okay. controller. No. Wah, wah. Okay, so the biggest um, no latency, no lag. issue... Yes, no latency, no lag. That's going to be the biggest thing. So, as as I have a, <laughs> <laughs> and <I'm sorry>. scene. <laughs> oh man, I, I don't know. I like I like the the feel of the Xbox controller, especially for PC games uh, versus the PlayStation. Oh, uh, even I though I know the PlayStation do. does have better, at least for some of the games, have better dead uh, dead zone. But yeah, anyway. Next. Next. Yeah, fair enough. No, fair enough. He's the host. <laughs> Absolutely. I bow down. What? Don't bow down to me. I'm not the host. You're the host. Mm-hmm. So this is a PSA, public service announcement of some shady MFers out there that are effing people over because there's effing resellers out there reselling game keys. What do you say? That's been happening forever. No, 
these people are reselling keys to free and free to play games. Nice. That if you just went to Steam, oh, they're free. No. So one of them was uh, they were astonished to see that uh, Vampire the Masquerade Blood Hunt, which is a free to play game, is getting its keys sold by someone, which is absolutely astonishing. Oh, That's way to bad. keep it under. Oh. Why well, you have to oh, blow yeah. their cover? <laughs> also, Seriously. by the way, that game just released like about a week yeah, ago. Yeah, no, I was so. actually looking that up to see if maybe I want to play it because it's like a battle royale, oh. but with vampires and stuff. Yes. So, yes. Like, hmm. If you like Vampire the Masquerade series, go check that out. It looks pretty cool. I'm willing to give that a try. That might be a game of the moment coming up if uh, enough of us can get in there and and, and suck it. Wow, that was terrible. Okay. I know. Wow. I meant for it to be terrible. So there is a game. Oh. <laughs> you guys both suck. Um <laughs> oh, the, restart that timer. I would say the irony, but I guess it'd be the, the silver, right? It's not really necessarily iron, right? Yeah, well, it's that's blood. True. It has iron in it. Mm, yeah, you can restart my time. That'd be great. Uh, <laughs> Unless you're Vulcan and then it has copper. She's going to get the time back here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Okay. Have you guys heard about the Guilty Gear series? I okay, heard no. that name. I don't know okay. much about it. So it's no themed around like middle band music, which is why I think you've probably heard of it, Zycia. But um, there's a new character in it. Uh Jacko Valentine, which I love because he's like all about the metal band Halloween. Um, his crouch pose has him crouching with his butt in the air, his feet in the ground, and there is a arms hashtag, crossed. <laughs> a hashtag Jacko pose uh, going around. D- everybody hashtag Jacko pose in Twitter everywhere you go and they're recreating the same pose for other characters. 60 seconds. What? So to leave you with this one is this is just kind of like some sorcery from people being online. But uh, basically there is a guy sorcery. who without mods that was terrible. There's a guy <laughs> without mods Sorry. that is able to create a perfect sphere in Minecraft, like Minecraft vanilla. Now, I'll say this isn't using just vanilla gameplay in the in a in a way. It's it's a little cheap trick, right? Because he's actually using console commands to actually like kind of use some of these blocks. Um, but he's console he's able to or command block commands. What's that? Console commands or command block commands? Uh, it says Minecraft console commands to build in, okay. uh, build an in-game machine that repli- uh, manipulates armor stands and sand blocks to create perfect circles with no jagged edges. So it's not easy. I mean, there's a whole process to it. He has a whole video on YouTube. You can look him up. Uh, some guy, Mr. Cat. Uh, so you can like, look him up. He has a whole video on it. But it's it's a it's a different thing. But it was just neat to see a vanilla like without mods, like able to make a perfectly sphere. And it's actually kind of weird to look at because it's like a perfectly sphere sp- a pool. But yeah. like it's just weird because you're used to regular Minecraft. So, <laughs> yeah, it's like taking advantage of like sand blocks when you drop them a certain way. They kind of float and stay right where you drop them instead of like clicking in with the rest of the blocks. It's amazing. OMG, is this a long video? Um, also, another public service announcement before we wrap up here. Uh, as Kelly just talked about the Jackapos, please be very careful going out and check it. Uh, I don't know if you ever would have thought this, but having a character shove their butt in the air it's- and put their head on crossed arms down on the ground not suitable could, for work yeah, could end up with a not safe for work yeah. oh NSFW. yeah i'm sorry i should have i really well I, that's what i need it is like, definitely nsfw for sure yeah i'll oh, put it yes, like a, i'll 
I'll I'll split this and be like, not suitable for work. Just so yeah. everybody's aware. Leave now. Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah, it is. Super it fun. is. I mean, if your butt's in the air and your feet are on the ground, come on. Yeah. Uh, the accidental music so was when I was like, they, somebody had posted a video and they actually showed an actual real life tiger stretching and doing the jacket pose, <laughs> which That's was fine. adorable. That's wow. fine. Totally fine. Totally normal. So, but yeah, take some other characters. Not OK. So if you're interested <laughs> in sending us an email, hysterical. you can send us one at GOA at sasgaming.com. That's simple. Moving on. All right. So before Wait, we I thought we got an email, we didn't get an email. From Twitch. Oh, we got an email at the hate thing. Uh, I don't even I just discard that stuff. That doesn't even make sense to me. Like, oh, specifically. So the from hate rate Twitch. stuff, it was not from a person. Was... It was from Twitch. Yeah. So I, I yeah. Sorry. Yes. But go ahead. I'll, I'll put the email tag I... back up. You can talk about it. So, yes, uh, we did all of our. Broadcasting on Trovo and YouTube, by the way, Trovo was at PAX. That was very interesting. But That's we did fair. all of our broadcasting on Trovo and YouTube last week to because since we don't normally broadcast on the day that we were supposed to not broadcast on Twitch, we decided to take the whole week off of Twitch. And then each and every one of us that had a Twitch account got an email from Twitch about, hey, um, we happen to notice that. I didn't get one on my um, personal account. You didn't? Mm -mm. What? The, I totally got one of mm -hmm. my Twitch account. I know. That's why you said that. I thought it was interesting because SAS Gaming got one, but Zycia Gaming did not. Oh, wow. Wow. and you're like, you're like the and I'm, affiliate. Oh. Yeah, I'm like an affiliate and actually have like streaming and stuff. I don't know. Uh, I don't I'll have to go back through and make That's sure that weird. they, they get spammed that. or something. Yeah. But, OK, but so it wasn't out of my story. Inbox. The story gets deeper then. That's kind of interesting because, yeah, my personal one got one uh, and the email was basically the like, hey, thickens. we noticed that you decided not to stream due to hate raids. And, you know, we really care about hate raids. Oh, by the way, did you notice there was these five things that you could do in an account to, like, uh, try to moderate this stuff? Yeah. Totally missing the point mm. of like, yeah, everybody knows how to moderate this stuff. It's yeah. just it's that bad yeah. that we're asking you for help. We don't need help. a user manual showing us five things that we do to our account mm. to reduce hate rates. And I mean. It was the most corporate response that you could. I mean, I absolutely remember the days of Twitch working with their working with their big streamers. Obviously, they're going to work with the biggest ones. OK, mostly, I did get it. It was flagged into like spam or something. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Just found well, it. Uh, I, I, so it's so they, they absolutely robo spam this for everyone. Mm -hmm. And it was so corporate speak as opposed to like their past, you know, like six years ago or so where. You know, they actually listened to their people and tried to make things yeah. better. So um, did they get a message? Sure. Yes. Did they get the message and care about it? Probably no. not. Well, and that's what we had. But we discussed actually what we on the last we podcast. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and you know what? I hate it when they prove us right. Yeah. And mm. the thing is, you know, as we said, we're multi-streaming now. So we're yeah. on Trovo, we're on Twitch, and we're on YouTube, and we love what you guys done, respectively. Yeah, what they've done is helped us to branch out, and yeah, it's working. So and we're super excited about yeah. multi streaming. And if Twitch decides to to block us or something, that's fine. I mean, fine. we we can move on. Like it's mm -hmm. we're not gonna be held to nope. that. Nope. So as Mike, our host, said, if you want to share your story about Twitch or anything else, hey, it doesn't even have to be gaming related. It can no. be about small, little, tiny things that you build. And then all of a sudden that you find yourself as a co-host <laughs> on co the podcast. <laughs> I'm not going to promise that that's going to happen to you. But, but nonetheless, <laughs> hey, you hey. can send in your email to GOA at SASGaming.com. We'll consider it and we'll read it on the air. Uh, Tell us about possibly. any 
Halloween decorations or Absolutely. what other. There's a call out for that. Yes. You need to know what you're doing for Halloween. Yes. So so send us an email. GOA SAS gaming. Um, and to get <laughs> into the like, next bit. Because there is a next bit. So, oh, there is a next bit. Obviously, right. that's what got our attention this week. And mm-hmm. I know you guys are probably like, oh, he's going to start the spill and he's just spiel. He's going to go into I it don't, and start talking about stuff. I don't Spiels. have music for spilling. I don't have music for random bit. For yeah, my, I know. Yeah. Don't worry about it. It'll be Do fun. Do we need to wait a second? No. God, no. No. <laughs> That no, was a please. ramp up, man. There is no Bud Light and no Ford trucks here. Are are. There, I was literally about to say, is a Ford truck coming from my <laughs> God. Whoa. <laughs> Don't worry, Michael. I've got you. <laughs> oh, God. oh so, Mike, I did that just for you. I know it's fine. No, uh, I want to mention because uh, we usually we used to go through all of our handles and we talked about follow us and stuff. And, mm-hmm. you know, and you guys can still do that. We really appreciate if you do that. <laughs> Uh, our handles are on the screen. If you don't, I'm Zat, as I see gaming, it's Phoenix Nova and day drinker ATL. That's us. Just, you know, follow us, whatever. Um, but no, I want to mention early, uh, that I will be doing shocktober again this upcoming month yes. in October. Uh, so if you're not familiar, oh, yes. shocktober is where I play <laughs> scary games that I picked last year. This year, I don't get to pick because I apparently don't get to rule myself anymore. No. Uh, Sorry. but <laughs> not, not during shock <laughs> Uh, I, I get to play scary games, which, uh, obviously if you follow me and you know me, I don't like, uh, it's not my thing. Uh, but I will play them. And the reasoning why is that I raise money for a charity, uh, that's called able gamers, which gives kids with disabilities, uh, the ability to be able to play games cause they, they're able to, uh, create different, like, um, uh, like controllers and things to kind of, uh, you know, mold whatever they need to have those kids who have a disability, whatever that may mm-hmm. be to be able to play a game. So it's a really cool, like I, I, I say it's like a plug or like it's an ad. An it's amazing. not, it's really not like, no, I'm not like it is in sponsored by them or anything. I just, I really like the um, charity. Yeah. Amazing charity. It was, yeah. it's freaking fantastic. So Seriously. last year Couple I raised things about that. Good. Well, say last year I raised six hundred dollars uh, because of you guys, not me. I didn't. I didn't mm-hmm. like. There's nothing that I did other than you guys supporting us and watching the stream. Um, but we raised six hundred dollars for Able Gamers, and yeah. and my first thing is we have to beat that this year. We yes. have to beat that this year. Uh, that is yeah. definitely something that I was going to mention. Um, so you know, even if it is you know whatever you got, like even if you can't, that's cool. Just come out watch the stream. Uh, you know, just be a part of this and, you know, and ultimately you're going to get payout. I'm going to be getting scared and if you, yelling if out you, loud and stuff because I don't get to even pick my games this year. <laughs> if it's you don't even- have uh, any money to spend. Get on our Twitch email us at GOA games that you want to see my as I see it playing. Um, anything that will make him maybe poop his pants. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Spread the word yeah, on social word. media because the more people that show up, mm. even if even if you can't donate five dollars, yeah. and that's cool, people, that's fine, and Maybe there's no shame in that. Can. Yeah. Spread the word because somebody else might be able to. Mm. Yeah. And the more people we have there, the better chance we got. And on top of that, the other thing is, is this year we are going to take these and we're going to drop them out on YouTube as well. So that you can enjoy them, even if you can't see them live. Yeah, and this was we're going of... to immortalize this forever. Immortalize? Yeah. So no, I like to immortalize <laughs> much better. <laughs> I mean, it's kind so of the, same thing, the main thing with this know. is you know it's about having fun. I guess that's exactly. What it's about everybody um, else having fun, but Mike. That's yeah. what it is. And so I'm going to be streaming this year because October somehow decided to have five weekends this month. So it'll be five days this and week. Halloween. No, not on Halloween. Um, and Halloween. It's not going to be Halloween. I'm not. I already have plans. Sorry, it's not happening. Uh, it'll be five days. Uh, it'll be so every Friday of the month of October. Um, starting at probably eight o'clock, uh, oh, probably eight or nine. And I think this yeah. year, I think I'm going to actually just stream it from the SAS gaming page. Uh, we may actually make a nice little overlay and make it look all pretty. Oh, and really? We yes. might. We may we even have might? we may even have them as spectators on the side getting to laugh at me while I play a game live. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But uh, the idea oh, is the same. That was we're going to be idea. we're I'm going to saying. be I'm going to be <laughs> raising money for able gamers. It's going to be a great cause. And I really appreciate you guys came out. Cause. Uh, use the hashtags. Hashtag SAS gaming. 
and hashtag Shocktober. And that way we can find you guys. And if you have a suggestion, yeah, send it into an email or even hashtag Please it or whatever. Do. If you see anything, yeah. like, you know, do that. Absolutely. And you can spread my clips like all over the place if I end up my pants. Oh my um, God. Feel free to do I, that, will, so. I will I mean, take a picture of Mike's <laughs> pants and post them. Oh my God. Oh, that would be. If someone, amazing. a budding developer, wants to make the mm-hmm. game. I will make Mike get his pants. Oh my god! We'll do an extra. <laughs> yeah, if you're a developer, there you want to make yes. a game just to scare the shit out of me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my god! Anyway, I don't know what I'm getting into. It's gonna get worse as the years go it's on. It's totally sure. gonna get worse. Oh um, my gosh! Eventually, I'll have VR and it'll be even more. It's... Like I would just die because <laughs> no, <I'm> <laughs> I'll play uh, with you, Mike, and I'll uh, be screaming uh, and laughing the whole way. Yeah, laughing. I would love sure. to be scared. So anyway, that yeah, is some multiplayer games. That mm-hmm. is what got our attention this week. And we appreciate you all. If you want to support us a little bit more sure. than just watching us because you feel like you need to. Uh, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash sasgaming, where we put out our uh, podcast ad free along with, uh, you know, some other things you get, like some Discord mm-hmm. perks. And potentially we're going to try to keep adding on new things to that, that uh, Patreon. So tell us what you want. If you we're want us to do name, certain yeah, things, what credits, do you want? then uh, let us know. Um, we're going to make name any some- credits. Yeah, we're naming the credits. We can do that. We can even do stickers. Like, I mean, we we're can do whatever you guys nice. want. But like, really, we just got you got to tell us, you know, what you're looking for. Outside do you of want guy. one of these beautiful, <laughs> creepy, hand delivered? Hand delivered. Stop um, saying that. <laughs> I can't hand deliver this stuff. It's so funny. It's hand delivered though. It's a hand. Okay. Anyway. Well, okay. Uh, <laughs> but until Kelly next time. Can deliver a hand. Yeah. Until next time. We love all of you guys. Be safe. Yeah. Take care of yourselves and uh, love your neighbor, I guess, or something. I don't know. I try to be more motivational, but I can't think of anything else right now. Wow. You guys be take posy. it easy. Take her easy, bud. Take her. Sometimes you get in trouble if you love your neighbor. Yeah. Take her easy.